are some of the world's most powerful governments using invasive digital surveillance under the guise of curbing COVID-19. Taking personal information from social media accounts, stepping up facial recognition and collecting biometric data without consent are just a few of the ways in which governments around the world are taking surveillance to a whole new level. In some democratic countries, surveillance is being used to analyse health data related to COVID-19. Authoritarian regimes also appear to be using the pandemic as an excuse to double down on gathering data, silence critics and misuse information. Human Rights Watch has noted that the Chinese and Russian governments are just two examples of those expanding their surveillance capabilities and restricting people's rights in the ways that are not justified on public health grounds. The unprecedented nature of COVID-19 has opened up an opportunity for these governments to enforce more stringent measures in order to obtain information that tracks and monitors people's movements, apparently to assess the effectiveness of health interventions. However, the gathering of large data sets for COVID-19 could pose a risk for those living in poverty or within a minority in a non-democratic country and could even cost lives. Censorship in countries such as China, which does not want anyone to criticise the government's response to the pandemic, is already well established. It has been reported that there was censorship of reports on the coronavirus when it first broke out in Wuhan at the end of November last year. Despite the efforts of Chinese journalists to get the information out, they were silenced by the Chinese Communist Party and subsequently reprimanded and put in jail. A doctor who wanted to warn people about the virus consequently died from it. Now that the country appears to have a grip on the virus, intrusive surveillance will very likely be kept in place to monitor discussions, messages, movements and the details of anyone who dares to speak against the government's approach. Methods of aggression surveillance has been previously used by China on its Uyghur Muslim minority in Xinjiang, placing them into forced detention and making them undergo indoctrination. This does not bode well for those concerned that intensifying methods could put more people at risk of such actions over the coronavirus. One example is the Health Code app, which has been introduced in China, which local authorities rely on to make decisions about quarantining individuals. 700 million people were registered on the app, giving their personal details, including their ID number, where they live, where they have been, who they have seen. And the app then uses three colours to determine whether they can go out or whether they need 7 to 14 days quarantine. However, the questions asked via the app are not effective enough to get an accurate diagnosis. China is not the only country that has been intensifying surveillance. Russia currently has 100,000 facial recognition cameras which it alleged to keep track of individuals who have, been, who have been ordered to quarantine for 14 days. The use of the cameras has led to fears that the data collected will be used to identify as those critical to the Russian government and to silence criticism. In addition, Russia built COVID-19 high-tech centres which uses artificial intelligence to watch the movements of people coming out of their homes in case they are evading quarantine. It has reportedly also installed facial recognition software on people's mobile phones, prompting concerns about whether such intensified surveillance will ever be removed. The surveillance system has also been used to analyse the social networks of those who have or are suspected to have coronavirus. But a leaked EU report found that the pro-Kremlin outlets in Russia have sought to aggravate the public health crisis by spreading disinformation about COVID-19. This has included the claim that COVID-19 is being used as a biological weapon created by China, the US or the UK. The Human Rights Watch identified eight conditions where governments using surveillance need to adhere to to curb COVID-19. These include being limited in purpose, upholding human rights against abusive surveillance, being transparent about any data, sharing agreements, mitigating any risk. And failing to do this could lead to a detrimental erosion of trust between authorities and the public and could result in hindering efforts to combat COVID-19 around the world. It seems unlikely that powerful regimes in China or Russia will adhere to such conditions. It is paramount that the issue of surveillance and intrusive data gathering is not overlooked amidst the growing pandemic.